I'm Amos the Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's opening call. Come over to our website, folks, at TFNN. You go into newsletters, you're going to see it right on the left-hand side, the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593.33. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? When you get Basil's newsletter, you're going to get approximately 12 separate archives so you can see how Basil looks at the market each and every day and how you can understand how to ride the Chapman wave. Basil, how you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. How are you? Good. Had a, Good. A, a lot of grief lately, and uh, I just want to say that, uh, at least on my behalf, uh, uh, I think that we lost a, a really dear friend, and uh, there's there's very little we can say. The speed of with, with which it happened is just unbelievable, and. Um, all I can say is... Uh, I know. There's, you know, it, it, the toughest thing about death, folks, is that there's always a void. The void is as heavy as you can get. And what happens is that the, um, it affects everyone differently. And, you know, there's, there's, uh, to me, there's always this void. And, you know, no matter what words you say, they're never enough, man. I mean, that's it's like, wow, man, okay. Um, yeah, it's like, are you kidding me, man? At least, at least he's left us with not just memories, but a lot of technical indicators. Which is really cool. With I know. A lot of expressions that throughout the day we repeat them. <laughs> you know, don't, don't wait, wait for a loss to increase. Just get out when you can. It's just the best thing that you can do. Uh, have your choice. So what I wanted to show you is that um, within the, the context of all that I look at, uh, and I use nine period moving average, 14 period moving averages, the MACD, that's the moving average convergence, divergence, um, the slow stochastic, uh, the on balance volume. Uh, and most importantly, what I look at is how prices move down and how, if there's a divergence between the indicators. And then I also like to look at other areas of the market. So, what's really fascinating for me is that this little cluster, this is on the left side here is the Dow chart. Okay. So we, we, we have long positions going all the way back from uh, 2020, the low of 2020. We try to keep those and we trade around them and we add to them. So on the very short term for subscribers, we, we've been trading for quite, quite a long time now, the three times long Dow. And even though the trend has been down, we've been able to get some really nice big spikes to the upside. And we've gone at profits there. And then if we take it out, we're taken out. If it holds, it holds. But we treat it as if it's a trading position. So we added a trade. Uh, we've done it twice now from the very low, actually the day before the last thing was last Wednesday, 31,429. But what I really wanted to talk about is you, you're talking about the, the negativity. But what's really important about this is that there's been price movement. If you look at the Dow and you see here, here's the 200 period exponential moving average at 32,900. We, we are still way down at 32,522. So there was a period where the Dow, and you can see in the weekly chart, there was a period where the Dow was absolutely the leader and then it started to pull back. And if I show you the S&P, you'll see that it's very, oops, I typed it into the den by mistake. Let me just do that again. You'll see that the S&P, Right here, and I'll show this in my my uh, the in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians Hour at ten o'clock. I'll show some of these techniques in greater detail. So here's the 200 period moving average. This time the S and P is right on the 200 period moving average. Plus there's these two little trend lines here, the green and red. I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. How many times? Look how many times the price has been pulled back from that level. If we break above it for whatever reason next week, we can get into the 4,000 and 32 area. I think that'll be an important breakout. But now look at this, the QQQ, this is the NDX 100, the 200 period moving average, which was like a magnet before, is actually now moving like a propellant to the upside. So the 313.38 high that was made at the very beginning of February, 
look at how nicely the uh, the index one this is the daily chart if you look at the week the monthly chart it's not looking good at all but on the daily chart this is good and if you look at the SMHs, and I always like to think that the SMHs, in many ways, are kind of a, a predictor of the general market trend, they do very well. They actually went above the high of the 2nd of February of 255.64. So I, I just want you to put things into, into perspective to say this is a very diverse market, whereas before we had the Dow leading, then the S&P, then the Qs. This time we've got the Qs that are actually doing very nicely. The S&P is actually lagging and the Dow's. Uh, lagging the those two. So there, when we're looking, I don't think this is one market. And I think that's the reason why whatever the Fed says tomorrow, it, yes, it could impact the financials. But I'm starting to see, and this is for subscribers, we're looking at certain areas, I call them under the radar, that are starting to work very well. Besides looking at the market, if you look at those sectors, if you're able to isolate, that isolation can keep you in a trade a lot longer than you, you, you'd expect because th they are not as volatile on the market pullback. So I think this is a period where stock selectivity is going to be really important. It is, it has been already. And you know, in, I'm always looking for peak Ds. If you look at the gold, that's the fourth highest peak when you start a buy signal to a buy mode. Gold did that. It did that peak D back in February, I think it was the second, and pulled back very sharply. And we just got that peak D because today there's a very sharp pullback. So I do see some digestion there, but the weekly chart is in leg D. So if you put it together, there is a chance that whatever the Fed does, the market can interpret it tomorrow afternoon or Thursday by saying, wait a minute, this is very selective because maybe the financials find some stability and gold is just telling us that, uh, I always think of gold, as, as the place to go to when there's a financial crisis. And that just might say that, at least for the moment, we might be able to get through the next few days without any major crisis. So I'm looking at both sides of the coin. I can see the downside, but when I go deeper in, I think I'm looking at very selectivity, uh, selectively the upside says, you know, um, some things have rallied very sharply off the bottom. So even if there's a pullback, they're still much higher than they were just even a week ago. And that, I think, is important. Yeah, this, this, this is always an interesting time, uh, as the <laughs> Chinese would say, right? Because the, the bottom line is that, you know, they, they saved the banks and, you know, they had to save well, the banks. Right. That's the bottom there's line. A great, the, there's a great, we know that there's a great cost at what they've just done. And the cost, it'll unfold over a period of time. But when you're saving everybody, which is really kind of not what they're saying, uh, we'll see what happens. This is this is a complex period, and I don't think you need to be very aggressive. You don't need to be. Uh, you don't have to put yourself on the line. You put your stops in, and I think you put your position. Well, we on. we know there's not enough money to save everyone. Absolutely, <laughs> that, that, there never is. That's that's a fact. So the yes. real question here is is that you know if we have four top banks, and you know you, you think that that's going to be it, well then you got to hope that one of those. The, the four top banks don't make any bad trades. And, and you never want to get to the position where you've shrunk down to three or four of anything. That's right. Just, that's not the way it should be. Right. So tomorrow Listen. I'll discuss the nine period moving average that David and I discussed uh, a year ago in great detail. We'll do it tomorrow. Hey, folks, it's on 10 o'clock in the morning. Check it out. Basil, thanks so much. Have a great one and a safe one. Thank you, Tom.